exposure, security was tightened, and all information resulting from Bletchley Park decodes or the top secret rating, code word ULTRA. The Germans didn't attach much importance to intelligence at the beginning. You don't if you're winning. They attached importance with the Blitzkrieg and winning the war quickly. We attached great importance to intelligence because we had our backs to the war and we had nothing else that we could rely on. By the summer of 1941, Bletchley Park was able to crack the naval enigma in less than two days, due partly to the U-boat documents and partly because they had learned to exploit a crucial weakness of the enigma machine. When an operator typed a message on the enigma, the machine would replace every letter with a different one. The letter typed in never came out the same. This was yet another basic flaw in the Enigma that could be exploited. The simple fact that no coded letter could ever be the original letter was vital to the code breakers in their quest to unravel the messages. As they studied the intercepts, it became clear that the Germans kept repeating certain set phrases. It was soon possible to predict which message contained a particular phrase. Bletchley Park called these phrases cribs. I remember Nieder mit der Engländer, down with the English. And of course, Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler was enormously valuable. I mean, you should never in inculcate in, them, in your military anyway the tendency to have exactly the same phrase opening every statement of a great victory. As military bureaucracy settled into routine, the Germans often sent the same message at the same time every day. There was one remarkable one which we used to use sometimes to cheer us up as a sort of college yell because it had such a wonderful rhythm. It went as follows. Um, Nicht anfliegbar, nicht aufgebaut, gif fro Düsseldorf, pof on so. And you could imagine six or seven adults <laughs> who had nothing better to do on the night shift reciting this and feeling a lot better afterwards, perhaps two or three times in some cases. I mean, that message in itself was pointless. All this said was, you cannot fly from this place, no building has taken place, signed off, whatever. It would have been much better if they hadn't sent it, uh, from their point of view. It was, uh, it was simply the way into the code. When they suspected the presence of a set phrase, the code breakers then searched for it in a message. Finding the correct position for the crib relied on the flaw in the enigma. The codebreakers lined their crib up against the coded message. Since they knew the Enigma would never duplicate a letter in the original, if any pairs of letters did match, the phrase must be in the wrong position. They slid the crib along the message until they found a point where none of the letters were the same. This could be where the phrase was located. If successful, they could then work out the Enigma settings for the next 24 hours. The code breakers became so adept, they would create their own cribs. They would ask the RAF to drop mines in a specific stretch of sea. The Germans would immediately send a message giving a grid reference for the mines. The code breakers knew the grid reference CF97 would be spelled out in the coded German message. So they used Caesar Fritz 97 as the crib to find the Enigma key. Bletchley Park called this gardening. By now, the codebreakers were not merely learning about the Enigma, but about the whole system of war communication. Could the new intelligence have an impact on an entire military campaign?
The test came in the deserts of North Africa. A new German general was making a name for himself with his aggressive attacks on the British. Erwin Rommel. My father was what you could call a warrior. He was more a soldier's general, not a paper general. He was very really lucky in Africa, not having been wounded except one day when a British splinter from a shell hit his belt. But he, the splinter was sticking in the belt and not in his body. Throughout 1941, the desert war swung back and forth across Libya as the Germans tried to capture North Africa. With only radio for communications, Rommel's North African campaign depended on the enigma. My father had never an idea that the German code was broken. He could not imagine that something like this could happen. But Rommel's strategy had one major weakness. He relied totally on the Italians to bring in supplies. Rommel's supply lines were a natural target for the British. The RAF was able to attack Italian convoys crossing the Mediterranean to Rommel because the codebreakers could read both the German Luftwaffe Enigma and the Italian Special Machine Cipher. I could not understand how Rommel failed to realize that we were breaking important signals. I mean, he was a superb general. He was winning. But then he started losing because his supplies were always sunk in the Mediterranean. Bletchley Park could pinpoint the location of enemy oil tankers and even know how much gasoline they were carrying. But to keep Ultra safe, it had to look as though the British knew about the convoys from some other source. There was an absolutely rigid rule that we could not use Ultra unless, first of all, an aircraft had been sent out to reconnoitre. Once the Ultra had been proven by Germans seeing a British aeroplane looking at the convoy, then you could use it. But not until. They may, might very well say, I wonder how they knew it. But fortunately, they always deluded themselves by saying, it must have been an Italian traitor in the Naples docks. My father ended his life with the suspicion that there was a gap in the Italian high command through which news escaped in care and arrived at the British side. But in heaven he must apologize towards the Italians and say I was wrong. But in the game of intelligence, the Allies had losses as well as gains. Although the German Secret Service never cracked an Allied cipher machine, Rommel did obtain vital inside information from a spy. The incident began earlier in 1941, when a group of American codebreakers visited Bletchley Park. With America not yet officially at war, the Secret Services on both sides were nervous about collaborating. Spies are not uh, prone to share a great deal straight away, you know. They, they, it takes time uh, for, for spies to, to warm up with one another, uh, and even British and American spies. They played their cards very close to their chest. Although the British worried about the possibility of American security leaks, they began sharing decoded Enigma messages and diplomatic reports about the war. British security fears were justified, for these exchanges soon gave Rommel his own intelligence breakthrough. Reports on the British campaign in North Africa were sent regularly to Washington by the U.S. military attaché in Cairo. The Germans intercepted the messages, but couldn't...